He's gonna try to go in.
Well, I didn't like cheeseburger burger and a cat's near me. A petrified fish disease, I wish somebody might hear me. I didn't like people to honey melon watercress. I didn't like fish shoes down my honey watermelon. I didn't seem to miss you when you kissed my honey water. And even showed a picture, showed it down my honey's water. But who laid the silver tooth, broke my sunny shoe shine. And all my plastic melon dreams are waiting for the new shine. Pardon me, Doug. Is this a picture of Otis Redding? Yes, yes. Take it just before it dies. Well, you can give me his eyes. I didn't know. I didn't know that I was that far gone. I didn't know. I didn't know that I was that far gone. I didn't know. I didn't know that I was that far gone. I didn't know. I didn't know that I was that far gone. I didn't know. I didn't know that I was that far gone. I didn't know. I didn't know that I was that far gone. I didn't know. I didn't know that I was that far gone. I didn't know. I didn't know that I was that far gone. Ladies and gentlemen, on the vacuum cleaner. Robert, just call me Josie. Just call me Josie.
It was late one fall night at a fairground near town when Esther first saw the angry man who groveled toward her and stood by her side with a bucket that swung in his hand. His grin stretched the folds of his pasty white cheeks, and his lips hurled a dollop of murk on the curb. And the lights from the ride showed a mischievous sparkle that flashed in his hollow-eyed stare. He said, little girl, you can chop off my legs and then peel off my socks if you want to. But I'd rather you took this old puppet for me that I hold in my pail as we speak. And he stood looking down at the innocent girl, and she stared at the bucket bewildered, till he lifted the doll for the young girl to see, and a giant smile grew on his face. She saw the doll's eyes and she couldn't resist, and she thanked the man quickly and ran to the church, and she burst through the doorway with puppet held high, and a hush filled the chapel, and the people looked mean.
too much.
a chair and it made him jump Jerry ran and kicked the bus on the road My old Jerry was a cool mule Had it been me, Lord, I'd have killed that fool Boss tried to kick old Jerry in the head Jerry took that ball and it stomped him dead Stop that boss till he heard him scream
come out and wiped away the beads of sweat that glistened on his brow. His tired feet were buried in the quagmire, and his bloodshot eyes saw all that lay between him and fulfillment of his vow. his fingers wrap around a knotted root and pull his body upwards to a sea green mossy boulder and he dragged his weary shit ass up the mountain
me start by taking this opportunity. There's a couple of little uh, things I just want to say that um, we've got about six gigs left on this tour, and um, the four of us were talking backstage, and I want to take this sort of uh, speaking opportunity to thank a couple of people before we go on uh, what's going to be um, kind of our first extended hiatus in about 17 years. Um, oh, you're pretty happy to see that we're going to stop this. <laughs> no, no. No, really, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of a cool thing right now. Actually, you might have seen some cameras floating around. They're, they're doing an internet feed um, from this show. So it's an opportunity for us to use um, you know, this feed into the internet to kind of speak to you and all the other people who have supported us so much over the last 17 years via, you know, cyberspace and all that. So, um, um, let me just say that it, it's, um, you know, what we're planning on doing so that you get it, the message clearly from, from us right here is, is taking some time and writing some music and kind of getting our you know, a home life back together and then, you know, before we recharge so we can get, hopefully get another 17 great years out of this before we fly out. And I will say this right now, just just to all of you and and all the people who have supported us and kind of given this given us this opportunity to have uh, do what we do and and we do love it. Um, thank you all so much for everything that you've done for us, and um, we appreciate it so much. And and I will do. Like I said, we have six shows left. We're going up the West Coast, and then we're going to go back home. I will take this opportunity to uh, draw attention to. Um, our crew, we have, and without exaggerating, the greatest crew ever assembled in, uh, in, in the history of music. And I mean that, and uh, this is a chance for them to take a little breather too as uh, it's coming up, but I do want to just from the four of us thank them and just tell you, you know, it's, it's a lot goes into this. It's not just the four of us, it's a whole big family kind of team thing. So let's just have a hand for this. Everybody on the crew, and thank you guys. Okay, that being said, what I wanted to do was uh, tell you about this very strange dream that I had last night. <laughs> and uh, when I say last night, I mean, you know, because of the fact we're in Vegas and everything, and uh, I'm sure everybody's been up late, and we're, I know we're all just waking up right now, so that's why we're just kind of getting going right now. We'll play a lot into the night. But um, I did have this dream last night, and it sort of related to this whole Colonel Forbin thing. And here's the dream. So I'm sitting in the middle of this field, and um, in my dream, and it's just uh, clouds drifting by. It's a beautiful day. Um, flowers, you know. Um, wildflowers and the whole thing. And what happened was suddenly I saw, it sort of in the periphery of my vision, people started walking towards me. Um, first it seemed like, you know, two or three people over there and then, you know, another two or three over there until eventually I saw that there was a whole army of, of, of people surrounding in, in a big circle coming in and they all came towards me in the middle and, and everybody sat down and, um, what they did was they took this apple, one of the representatives of this, of this group of people took an apple and handed it to me. Hang on, let's get a little apple uh, field music. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so they hand me this apple and they say, what we want you to do is eat, you know, eat this apple that we're giving you as sort of a gift. So uh, when I opened up my mouth to eat the apple, I realized that I had no teeth. So I couldn't eat the apple. Um, in the dream, I suddenly started to feel a strange sensation in my upper gum. And what happened was, was one giant tooth grew out of my upper gum until I had a huge, enormous tooth sticking out of my mouth. And I tried to eat the apple. Uh, what I found was that you can't eat an apple with one tooth. And 
so there I was in the field. Um, and I started to get really nervous in my dream that the people would be disappointed that I wasn't eating the apple because I only had one tooth. And um, there was a, a, you know, a moment of real panic in the dream. And um, what happened was luckily at that moment, the earth flew closer to the sun than it had ever been before in the history of time. Um, being that we were sitting on the earth, you know, this had a big effect on us. And in, in flying close to the sun, um, my first thought was that, oh no, you know, the earth is going to burn up and that's going to be the end of everything. But instead of that happening, um, what happened was that the earth acted in the way that a grape acts when it hit with a lot of sunlight. It basically shriveled and turned into a raisin version of the earth. And uh, so you know, the, the whole horizon kind of collapsed in on itself until all of the ground wrinkled up and these wrinkles were basically created sort of mountain sides sitting around, you know, all this, this field of people and we all got crushed together into a big pile. Um, and uh, like I said, the only moments before I had been sort of panicking that I was supposed to eat this apple um, and that I couldn't because I had my one big tooth. But in being crushed together in a big pile, I found that when the earth um, became a raisin, all of my senses became much more vivid. In the way that a raisin is, 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 is more intense tasting than a grape, everything on earth became more vivid. So suddenly colors were incredibly vivid, sounds, um, emotions, you know? Love, um, and just as, just as the earth was becoming a much, much more rich and vivid place, I found myself in this pile of people sitting in between two wrinkles in, in the raisin that was now the earth. And uh, what happened is it just became a huge pile of groping, a big groping pile of, of love in my dream and, and, and slithering, a slithering groping pile of, of goo. And it was at that moment that I realized that, that, that um, game henge is a state of mind. You don't have to really get there physically. Uh, what I did at that point was I decided that every, all the other, uh, everybody in the whole universe needed to know about, you know, how simple it was to suddenly turn yourself into a big seething pile of, of uh, goo. And so I called on the famous Mockingbird, my friend, uh, whispered this secret into his ear, and sent him out across the universe to spread the word of uh, planets turning into raisins and goo.
affect a cause It's quite a bit like trying to heal a gunshot wound with gauze If you instead attempt to wrest the pistol from the hand Then I would not be able to equate my life with sand
Got out of bed, dragged a comb across my head Found my way downstairs and drank a cup And looking up, I noticed I was late Grabbed my coat and grabbed my hat Made the bus in seconds flat Found my way upstairs and had a smoke And somebody spoke and I went into a dream 